Hello students, in this video I am going to show you that why Gibbs free energy is called as the free energy. So we all know that Gibbs free energy is used to define whether a process is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. For example, if we have delta G values which are less than zero or negative, the process is called as spontaneous and if the delta G values are greater than zero or positive, then the process is non-spontaneous. The reason why we use delta G instead of delta H is that when we have an exothermic reaction that releases energy, not all of the delta H is necessarily released to the outside world for doing some kind of work. So the amount of the work, uh, amount of the energy that is available for doing some kind of work is actually this gives free energy. That's why it is called as a free energy. And some of the energy which is uh, stuck inside the molecule is called as T delta S as you can see in this formula. So this is the amount of energy that is not available to us for doing some kind of work. So how this energy that is T delta S is stuck inside the molecules? It is stuck inside the molecules because of the vibrations and rotations of the molecules. We all know that molecules can vibrate and rotate and therefore some of the energy from delta H that is enthalpy of friction some of this energy remains in the molecule and therefore it is not available for us for doing any kind of work. So the remaining energy which is available for utilizing it is called as a free energy or delta G. And that's why we use this criteria of delta G to define whether a process will be spontaneous or not. So let us uh, find out this by considering the example of the burning of this methane gas molecules. It is the gas which is used in our kitchens for cooking and for heating purpose. And this is the reaction when it burns the methane molecule CH4, it reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So let us calculate that how much free energy is available in this reaction uh, for doing uh, the work. And uh, we will also see that it will not be equal to the enthalpy of the reaction. The enthalpy of reaction for this is minus 890 kilojoule per mole. And you have negative sign because it's an exothermic reaction. Now let us calculate the free energy delta G and see whether uh, it's equal, less than or greater than delta H. So we have the formula for delta G already. Delta G is equal to delta H enthalpy minus T delta S. So for calculating delta G, we are given the value of the change in entropy and the temperature values. For instance, this reaction is taking place at 298 Kelvin. So we can put the value of 298. We're also given the value of entropy, which are fi uh, found by some experimental means. So for this reaction, the change in entropy is minus 0.242. We can put this value here. And of course, we are given the enthalpy of friction, which is minus 890 kilojoule per mole. So if you calculate this and solve this equation, you will find that free energy will be equal to minus 817 kilojoule per mole, which is definitely less than the enthalpy of friction. So this is actually the free energy out of 890 kilojoule, which is available for us for doing any kind of work like heating or cooking. So that's why you see why we call it a free energy because it's actually the available energy for doing any kind of work. Now different molecules can have different kind of vibrations and rotations and some of the energy which is subtracted from here is actually stuck in these product molecules in carbon dioxide and water and it's causing the vibrations and rotations in these molecules. For instance, I have uh, calculated the vibrational and rotational spectrum for this carbon dioxide molecule to see what kind of vibrations it can have. So let me show you the vibrations of this molecule. This is the carbon dioxide molecule that I have drawn in some software. And I have its vibrational spectrum. So you can see here we have two lines here, this one and uh, this smaller one uh, line. So if I select this and apply it, so you can see this molecule is vibrating and it has the stretching vibrations. But this molecule can also have another kind of vibrations like this. So here you can see it's bending. The bonds are bending, so it's a bending vibration. So there are different kind of molecules can have different kind of vibrations in which the energy is stored. And so the remaining energy is called as a free energy, which is available for doing some kind of work. 